Hey YouTube, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife news video. And this, of course, is the serious knife news video. You can tell because I have a jacket on, which of course is always what you wear if you want to be taken seriously. And so, yeah, no more jokes. Thanks a lot, though, for bearing with me in the April Fool's video. And thanks a lot to those of you who I, uh, I picked on or teased a little bit with some of those funny stories. Uh, Rob, I know when you make a modern folder, it'll be awesome. Also, Nick, uh, I didn't share the Medford collab your your collaboration with Medford Knives because I wasn't sure if everyone was supposed to know who was authoring the comic books. But if you don't mind that being out there, then hey, that's that's great. Uh, before we get into some of the stories that I want to share with you, I've got a couple of my own stories. Number one, if you have not taken the knife preferences survey that I posted, I don't know, I guess it's a couple weeks ago now. If you would please go over and do that, that would really really help me. Also, I plan to put out another survey about YouTubers. So remember I did the top five YouTubers a little while ago. I'd love to hear some viewers thoughts on that. So I'm putting a survey together about that. Now, uh, the other thing I want to mention about my own channel is I'm getting ready to do a first aid kit challenge. So uh, the same two guys that helped me out with the CRKT um, rescue cutting tool. I've got those guys to build some first aid kits as cheaply as they possibly can. Uh, Dollarama is where they've pretty much gotten everything and that's a thing in Canada. If not, I think it would be like the Dollar Tree uh, or Dollar General in the US, a really budget store. Uh, and so we're going to make a video about the best first aid kits we could build, what we put in them and why, and we're going to challenge you guys to do the same thing. So you want to, may want to be thinking about that and it's going to be judged based on both, okay, both the quality of your kit. So what do you have in there and is it good stuff? Just don't buy a bunch of crap to, to get it as cheap as possible. And then it's going to be judged as well on how cheap you are able to make it. So uh, I think this will be a really fun challenge. And the way I'm going to do that is to have you take a picture and post it on Instagram with a hashtag. I haven't got all the details worked out, but be looking for that and maybe be thinking about that. Finally, let's get to the actual knife news that I have. First off, there are some models dropping fairly shortly. There are some coming, some, some just released knives and some knives that will soon be released that I'm pretty excited about. The first off being the Zero Tolerance 0850. Uh, they also released the 0460, but that one's not my thing. But the 850 looks amazing. I was able to get one. Uh, they, the place I got it from didn't ship to Canada. So, uh, Dr. Frankie, thank you for helping me out with accommodating some shipping on that. Uh, secondly, Steel Will Cut Jack. That That is such an exciting knife and based on what they're saying on Instagram, that could be, I, I would suspect we're probably weeks rather than months away from that. At least I hope so. Uh, finally, Cold Steel Grick. Uh, that little knife is a really interesting knife and it is featured in a Knife News story. So by the way, if you're not following Knife News on you know Instagram, Facebook, and, and I don't know if they have a Twitter or not. I don't do that much with Twitter, but if they do, go ahead and follow them there as well. Uh, also, you know, I just added their website to my favorites. When I come into the office, I usually take a, a gander at what's new on the Knife News site. Uh, now, the problem with that is they usually release stories midday, but uh, that's okay. I'll have to talk with them about changing their schedule to accommodate me. Uh, yeah, not going to happen, right? Anyway, um, so those are some new knives coming out that I'm pretty excited about. The other thing is I've got a couple of new knives myself here. This is the Benchmade Boost. And the other knife I have here is the Benchmade Freak. Uh, really, really cool knives. Benchmade has done a great job. After playing with the Boost for a while, I can't operate the Freak apparently. Uh, but um, I will be doing some videos with those knives coming up, so be looking for that. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, if you haven't hit the like button, make sure you do that so you don't miss anything that's coming out. So those are the new upcoming knives that I'm pretty excited about. Next, number two story is Strider Closes Up Shop. This was crazy. Mick Strider sent this out via his social media, a couple of social media outlets, if I'm correct. And uh, yeah, they, they're just done uh, after 25 years. Uh, in his own words, he said he felt like they filled a, a hole in the knife marketplace and that hole has now been taken over by others and there's lots of hard use, kni use knives available. So they felt like maybe they were not quite as needed. Um, I don't know what to say about this. Maybe a New Orleans funeral is in order. Um, 
I was never a fan of Striders. Although, guys, I know there's people who I really respect. One of my favorite YouTubers is Solo Knife Reviews. Him and Rob uh, over at the Apostle P channel. They both love these knives. And I don't get it, but, they, you know, for those guys to like them, there must be something there uh, that I just don't get. Uh, so Strider Knives closes up shop. Uh, another cool story from a maker that I actually do like, Jens Anzo, or Jens Anzo, uh, is doing a new venture called, like, Anzo something. Um, check out Knife News. I'm sorry, I don't have the name for you right now. But uh, it's, it's an attempt by him to sort of expand his business, business a little bit and it looks like he'll be bringing in some partners that are not knife makers. So, so um, you know, his knives have a particular style to them, okay, and, and I think what he wants to do is, is bring in some other EDC type of products that carry along that same style and can fit well with what he's doing. So that's kind of a cool venture. He does say there'll be some cool custom knives coming. As you guys know, I'm not a huge custom knife guy, uh, but I, you know, I, I like to watch what's going on in custom knives because that tells me kind of where production knives are going to be going in the not too distant future. But um, yeah, that's, uh, so that's something if you're a big custom knife guy, Jens Anzo has got a new custom that he says should be, you know, debuting in June, which is, uh, you know, two months away or so. Uh, another thing from KnifeNews.com is the recent uh, Knife Gripes edition. Uh, Nick doing a little four minute complaint video about something in the, the knife industry that he's not into. Uh, I get, you know, they're really, really entertaining. They're just a short, quick video. Uh, I will say this, I am going to put out a video later this week or early next week in which I disagree with Nick about one of the things that he picked on in Knife Gripe. Uh, so be, be looking for that. Uh, Nick, you and I can talk about it beforehand. Uh, no hard feelings, but it should be a fun video to make. And I, I hope I can share uh, some uh, some interesting feedback on a particular uh, aspect of the knife industry that often gets complained about. Uh, this minute, this story I did mention in the April Fools video just to give it some credibility. Uh, Colorado to repeal their switchblade ban. This is excellent, and I'm really glad that they're doing that. Uh, as I said in the last video, every time I see these uh, knife laws changing in different parts of the world, uh, I'm always a little bit jealous. I wish Canada would change theirs as well to be. Uh, just more appropriate. Consider even this knife is an assisted knife. It opens pretty quickly, but it's nowhere near as fast as like any fixed blade in existence, right? So, um, you know, banning a knife based on how fast it can be deployed doesn't make any sense when fixed blades exist. Uh, oh yeah, really cool knife. Now this is one I won't be checking out, but some of you will probably love it to death, okay? And, and I, you know, I'm trying to as a reviewer, I try not to let my preferences override my, my videos too much. And this is one where I have to check my preferences and say, hey, this might be cool. Uh, Boker and Serge Penchenko. Uh, the Penchenko Lancer is a pretty cool popular model of his. And now Boker has done a collaboration and produced a Boker Lancer. Which looks like a really cool knife. You know, not for me, it's just too small, but I'm sure lots of you would find it really, really appealing. Finally, on one other note that I want to point out here is that uh, the Apostle P, Rob, actually did do a collaboration with Bark River Knives. It's a fixed blade. And it's a really nice fixed blade, four inch blade, clip point. Um, designed by his own admission, a lot of his the design has to do with the edge geometry and he's done some things to make it a very good knife to sharpen, which makes sense as he's a knife sharpener. And I think that's going to be pretty cool. I, you know, I probably won't be picking one up. I don't, it doesn't fit a niche in my fixed blade needs at this moment. Uh, but if you are looking for a decent mid-sized fixed blade, I think that would be a good place to look. Now, I don't know if it's available in market yet. It might be still in production. Uh, anyway, there you go, guys. That is the knife news, the real knife news. No jokes there. Uh, all, as I say, serious stuff, which you can tell by the jacket once again. Hope you enjoyed the video, and we will talk to you soon.